Okay, today we're going to look at a little bit of velocity movement in Scratch. So, so far we've looked at some pretty simple movement for the characters where they just move in a certain direction and then stop abruptly. And now we're going to look at something that adds a little velocity into the characters. So when you move them in a, in a direction, they're going to have a little bit of energy and take a little bit of time to slow down. Same thing for jumping. So uh, we're going to split this into a couple of different things. First, we're going to look at uh, movement for the character. And then we're going to look at in the X factor in terms of the moving in X. And then we'll uh, look at it having it stop at a at some sort of platform or grass or bottom and have it moving in a Y factor. So let's create a new demo here. Demos come up with the the cat sprite, which is fine at this point. Remember, typically when we are doing a movement, we want to create a forever loop that senses for different conditions over and over again. We're going to do conditions for eventually for it uh, moving the keys uh, up. And I can right click and duplicate this. We're going to do down and we're also going to do actually we're not going to do down, we're going to do left, right, left, and then up today is what we're going to do. We're going to have those three conditions we're going to be looking for. We're going to start with the right and left uh, working along the x-axis. Usually what we would do is simply turn it in a direction, point in a direction, which we can still put there for the right arrow and left arrow point in the left direction, which will be fine. Um, but usually what we would then do is move the 10 steps. And this is kind of the old way of moving it. So when we start this, we can see the sprite kind of moves back and forth. He flips around when you haven't oriented him in the regular, in the in this kind of rotational style. So now we get the the old style cat movement back and forth. Okay? What we're gonna do is take out those move steps. We're gonna use X. So it's gonna move in an X direction. And instead of just moving it in an X direction, which we still could do, we could change X by 10. And if it's going left, we could change it by negative 10. This would also be essentially the same thing. So now it's essentially doing the same thing that we just did before. Instead of changing it by this amount, what we're going to do is over and over again, we're going to change it by a set velocity that we're going to create in a variable. So we're going to call it x velocity. Alright, so velocity is 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 kind of is movement, power, speed, and speed in a direction really is what velocity is. And so there can be negative velocity, there can be positive velocity in any direction. And what we want to do is create an x velocity first that changes then by the x. And so the motion is going to do over and over again and forever. It's actually going to change x by this x velocity. Now it's we're we're not creating that x velocity at all right now, so um, there's there's nothing to be done really. And so what we are going to do though is two things: make the right arrow and left arrow arrow either add to or subtract from x velocity, and then also create something that over time will decrease x velocity. So let's put in the movement first and you can see what will happen by that. So let's change, when the right arrow, let's change it by one if the right arrow is pressed. And then let's change it by negative one if the left arrow is pressed. And let's see what this will do now when we start up the program. Right arrow, so it just kind of keeps on moving. I've pressed it and it doesn't, it doesn't stop when I when I take it away. And you can see that velocity number just keeps on increasing and then decreases and finally when it gets to a positive velocity it will go in the other direction. So you can kind of slide it around like that a little bit. Very difficult to stop. So what we're going to do is have it decrease naturally back to that zero point. One way we can do that is using our operators, our multiplication operator, and we're going to set our data, not the x, but our x velocity, we're going to set it to 
a essentially a percentage of itself, a smaller percentage of itself, by multiplying it by a, a decimal, a fraction. And so we're going to set x velocity to x velocity times, and let's put in 0.8. This essentially means it trims off about 20% of the velocity every time it comes around, and eventually it will get back down to zero. So let's try this again. Let's start it. Watch that velocity number. Now I increase the power, and it will decrease the power automatically. It doesn't matter really what those numbers are. It just essentially comes to a standstill. Now because that power is decreasing by 20% each time it comes around, um, in order to really move faster, you're going to have to now bump up these speeds. So let's double them and see what that does. nice thing about Scratch is you don't even need to usually start it over, but in this case we're going to... There we go. Now you see it has a little bit of natural stopping point. So there's movement by velocity. More of a, a natural kind of movement back and forth. So the, there's our x. <clears throat> now let's talk about our y axes. They're movement back and forth our y axis up and down. We are also going to use an, a y velocity variable. And we also need to make sure both of these are set to zero at the beginning. So let's go ahead and do that now so we don't forget. And now we're going to use a, a y velocity um, to change the up and down. First thing that we're going to do is um, essentially set y velocity to a number. So rather than increase, we want it to go almost automatically up and do a jump. So we're going to set it to like a 20. And let's watch what happens when you know, left, right, now watch what happens with the up. Nothing, because we haven't changed it yet. All we've done is change the variable. So we need to go back to motion. We're going to change our y by y velocity. Start it over again left, right, up. Okay, now it's just jumping, but it's not falling. We have no gravity or no negative y velocity as the case may be because there's no gravity really. I don't want to break it to you, but there's no real gravity inside the video games. It's just uh, an illusion. So we're creating the illusion of a negative, of a gravitational force by using a negative y velocity. So let's add that in and let's also add in, so I don't have to keep moving this dude back to the middle, Let's add in a centering at the beginning of each time back to zero. And then our negative y velocity, we're essentially going to do the same thing as this script, except we're going to change our y velocity to y velocity times 0.8. And you might need to mess around with that a little bit more to in order to get uh, or y velocity equals y velocity times 0.8, basically decreasing it by 20% each time. And you might need to mess around with that a little bit more just to give it a little more gravitational pull. Let's see what happens now, right? Left, jump, and it takes it to zero, um, but it does not um, decrease it because in this case we actually want to minus it, okay? You take it down to zero, so if we're doing left and right, that works, but when we jump, it doesn't actually bring it, give it the negative velocity that we're looking for. So we're going to get rid of this uh, for right now. And what we're going to do is actually decrease. So we're going to, we're going to uh, set the y velocity, and we're just going to use a, a minus for the y velocity. So we're going to assume that it's um, going to increase, it's going to be at 20, and after it's set to 20, we are going to decrease the y velocity by maybe 2 each time it swings around the loop. There we go, there's our, automatically we've got our gravity now. So, and we can kind of jump from down there, and we can jump, 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 and then have it fall again. So now we've got some gravity at least looks kind of like he's swimming down there at the bottom because now that we have some ground or we need some ground so let's let's um, go ahead and create another sprite in this sprite all I'm going to do 
is create some grass. I'm going to zoom this out so it's way down here at the bottom. I'm going to create just a box, some grass. Now we have some ground down here at the bottom. I'm going to set this so that at the beginning it goes to 0, 0, and it will just center our grass for us. Okay, let's restart and see what happens. So the cat still sinks because the cat doesn't know that the green is there. What we need to do is create a condition, an if, to check with the cat to see if it's touching any of the green. So we go in here, under if then set statement, if touching color, click on here and touch the green. If touching color, then what do we want to do? We want to set, not the x value, or the y value, but the y velocity value to zero. Okay, set it to zero and it should stop the cat. Now let's see what happens. It's going to be a little bit of a bug, um, but this is important to kind of understand something. Okay, we're going to set go again. It stops, and now he sinks. Why is he sinking? This is where it's important to understand the order of operations, how, how things basically happen sequentially inside of Scratch, in any programming, really. And so the order that you put things in is very important. Here, uh, right now, we have it decreasing the y velocity by 2 and then changing the actual y position and then after that checking to see if it's setting the color and setting it to 0. What we need to do is take this, set it just above the y change so that the last thing that it does is it checks to see if it is touching the green before it changes the y velocity rather than always minusing by 2 before and then changing before checking. So let's see what this does. There we go. We got dude going back and forth here. Okay, now we need to set a jump. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to put in the up arrow. It's going to set the y velocity to 20. Uh, the problem right now is that when right before it changes the y, our jump isn't working anymore. Okay. So we need to put an if after the statement, and this works anyways because we only want it to be jumping when it is touching the green anyways. It can only, it can't jump in the air, at least in this case. Uh, we, we want it to touch when it's touching the green. So we're going to take out this block here. We're going to set it right after that. So it's going to check to see if it's touching the green, automatically set it to zero. If the up arrow is pressed, then it will set velocity to 20 as the very last thing before y velocity. Let's see what happens. Okay, still stopping, that's good, left and right. And we've got some jumping. And now we don't have any double jumping. I'm holding down the arrow key. The most that it will get is 20, and it will jump up and down. And now we have a little bit of a platform jumper that we can work with. Uh, check out some of my other examples. I'll put this one as well in my profile so you can check it out. Uh, please message me if you have any questions and enjoy coding with Scratch.